Hey, it's Ashley, and I'm back with episodes 8, 9, and 10 of Marry My Husband. Um, I just want to say I hope everybody's month went well. I'm doing all right. Trying to get my health back in order, so I might have another video this month with just my health journey I'm not sure yet but at this point I'm gonna say it's a go we'll see if I actually follow through on it or if I want to share that publicly but anyways let's get into marry my husband the web novel and we're on chapter 8 the side dish stores owner Jiwon washed the soup from her hands and dried off a paper towel. She was about to leave when someone tapped on the inside of the bathroom stall. Excuse me, person outside? Hmm? Me? Jiwon looked around, but she was the only person in the bathroom. Yes, yes, cried the person inside the stall. Um, could you please help me with something? Someone was desperate enough to ask for help from a stranger in the woman's bathroom. Jiwon instantly guessed why pads the stranger must have unexpectedly gotten her period yes yes if you're not too busy the unlucky stranger sounded like a lagging computer albeit happier just a moment i'll bring you one jiwan said thank you you're a lifesaver thank you so much i'll make sure to repay you this favor i promise jiwan ran to the office and opened her drawer she pulled out her pouch containing wet wipes and sanitary pads after some hesitation, she also took the black cardigan hanging on her chair. Miss Kang, Ji Hyuk spoke from inside as he gathered as she gathered the items. Oh, Mr. Yu, you're not having lunch? Now that she thought about it, she had almost never seen him in the cafeteria. She'd seen him there a few times when she first entered the company, but not since. What about you? he replied. I have some stuff to take care of first. I'll leave now, Ji Won called. She hurried back to the bathroom. When she slid her pouch under the third stall, the unlucky stranger eagerly received it. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're a lifesaver. No problem. You can use anything in there, Jiwon said. A moment later, the unlucky stranger emerged. You saved me. Here you go. Huh? Miss Yu, Jiwon asked. Miss Kang? Miss Yu blinked. She was a new hire. He you on you, the youngest employee in the company. At 25 years old, she joined the company with Suman a month ago. Jiwon ha hadn't recognized her voice because she didn't work with her and their desks were far apart. So you're my lifesaver? I was planning on searching for you in the office. I'm so glad this worked out. Hugh Yeon jumped in excitement. She looked ready to do a handspring at this rate. Jiwon calmly grabbed Hee Yuan's shoulders. Wait, Miss Yu, turn around and let me look at your back. Hmm? Turn. Fortunately, Hu Yian didn't actually do a handspring. She simply turned around. There was a notable, noticeable stain on Ji Wan's. Oh my gosh, Hu Yian's white slacks. Ugh, the worst. I hate it. Hate it. Hate it. Hate it. That's the worst thing about having your period. So. Here, wash your hands and tie this around your waist. It leaked a bit. Oh my gosh, you're such a lifesaver. Hu Yian appeared touched beyond words when she saw the cardigan Ji Wan had brought. This bathroom is shared, so no one comes in here because it's uncomfortable. I thought I was going to be stuck in there forever. Someone came in earlier and I asked if they could lend me a pad, but they didn't even respond. They just walked out and slammed the door. I didn't even have my phone with me either. I almost cried, but then you appeared like some kind of superhero. While speaking, Hu Yian washed her hands, wiped them, looked at the mirror, and tied the cardigan around her waist. She was a fantastic multitasker. Someone came, but they didn't help? Jiwon asked. Yes, I asked if they had any pants, pads, but they just left. I suppose they had something urgent to do. Thankfully, I met you, my lifesaver. It was the first time Ji Yuan had... Ji Wan had had a conversation with Hu Yian. The lifesaver thing was awkward, but cute. It's just a pad. Did you eat lunch yet? No. What would you? Uh, no. What about you, my lifesaver? <laughs> my, my lifesaver? Again, Ji Wan giggled. Whoa, this is the first time I've ever seen you laugh. 
Jiwan was more surprised at Hugh Yeon's er exclamation. Really? I don't laugh? Yes, you're quiet in the office. That's why I thought you were scary, but clearly I was wrong. Have you had lunch yet? Jiwan shook her head. No, I was about to eat. Then let's eat together. I'll get your water, Hugh Yeon added. Jiwan laughed again and walked out of the bathroom with Hugh Yeon. Do I really not laugh at all? After thinking about it, she realized she never really laughed anywhere, not just in the office. She only ever carried on work-related conversations. She'd had a habit of building up walls around herself ever since school days. Ju Yu, Jiwan, over here. The only friend from her school days waved from where she was seated. Min Wan perched next to her like it was the most natural thing in the world. He also waved. The whole situation dumbfounded her. Ji Wan and Min Wan were an official office couple, but they never ate lunch together. They acted careful around other people. They'd been doing it for over a year, but today, Min Wan sat next to Su Min and called for Ji Wan. Oh, right. You eat with Su Min. I can eat somewhere else, Hu Yuan said good naturedly. Everyone else was almost finished eating. She'd have to eat alone. Ji Wan stopped walking. Let's eat together. We're in the same division. What's wrong with eating together? Can I? Hu Yian's face immediately brightened. She must have wanted to join, but didn't want to invite herself. Ji Wan waited until Hu Yian filled her tray and then walked to the table with her. Su Min stared at them both. What's going on? Miss Yu and Miss Kang, have you gotten close without me noticing? Are you upset? You little narcissist. We became friends in the bathroom. I'm going to serve Miss Kang as my lifesaver from now on. Hu Yian answered. She ate a big spoonful of rice. Ji Wan took a sip of water and glanced at Min Wan's shirt. Oh no, your shirt's a mess. Do you think it's washable, Min Wan? It's okay. I'll leave it at the cleaners if that doesn't work. I'll just get a new one. Min Wan had strong attachments to his belongings. Ji Wan had once made a mistake while ironing one of his shirts and he had a fit, spewing nasty curses at her. Of course, that wouldn't have wouldn't happen anymore, but Jiwan had a tough time picturing him reacting so gently. I'm sorry, Mr. Park. I'll buy you another shirt, Suman murmured, her eyes downcast. It's all right. It's an old shirt, Minwan grinned. Huh. That old shirt was Jiwan's one-year anniversary gift to him. After entering the company together, they dated for one year and three months. Although she bore no affection for him anymore, she still had happy memories from their time dating. I can't believe I made happy memories with this bastard. She felt angry and even ashamed. It cost 1.2 million won though, she remarked. It's that expensive? Suman's eyes widened. Oh no, I caused another accident. Darn. It's nothing. Don't worry about it, Miss Jung. Min Wan didn't tell her it was a gift from Ji Wan. He just smiled bashfully. Absurd. Jiwan stopped speaking and focused on eating. Of course, her mind busily organized the situation and made future plans. Through the perspective of her 37-year-old eyes, she became certain Suman and Minhuan had acted strange even before Jiwan married him. To be exact, they started acting strange a month after Suman entered the company. However, Minhuan married kind and frugal Jiwan. It made sense if she hadn't broken things off with Suman after marrying Jiwan and continued with Suman on the side. Suddenly, Min Wan's rapid change after six months of marriage, the studio he bought to focus on stocks after he resigned, and their non-existent marital relationship all came into stark focus. I see. I was the pushover of pushovers. It was, I was still bitter. It was still bitter to realize the truth she'd always faintly guessed. Miss Yu, you're eating so well. How can a woman eat so much? Suman asked. Jiwan raised her head and looked to the side. Hu Yian was nearly done with her mountain of rice. Now she was finishing her meat in her kimchi. Now she was fishing for meat in her kimchi stew. You have to eat well to do great things, regardless of your gender, Hu Yian said. That's what my grandfather taught me. Suman laughed. It sounded closer to a sneer. So did your grandfather do great things? He sells bean sprouts and tofu and sauces. Oh, and he says his stews are doing well lately, too. Ah, I see. He runs a side dish store, Suman asked. Pretty much. Hu Yian shrugged and focused on eating again. Suman just backhandedly insulted her. Jiwan frowned. Did Hu Yian not notice? 
Our G1, I mean, Miss Kang is a great eater too. Isn't that right, Mr. Park? Minwan set down his spoon and looked between Jiwan and Suman's trays. Suman wiped her mouth as if she were full, but her tray looked almost the same as when she got it. You should eat more, Suman. How can you work after only eating that? This is why you're so thin. Huh? But I ate so much, Suman cried. Jiwan lost her appetite. She barely stopped herself from telling Suman to cut the bullshit. Jiwan gave up on lunch and raised her water cup, but it was empty. I'll go get you some, Miss Kang, Hu Yuan jumped. Suman rested her chin in her hand, watching Jiwan. Hu Yuan, can you get me some too while you're there? Hm? Why should I? Hu Yuan asked. You're going to get water anyway, Suman shrugged. You come here to work anyway, so do you want me to do your work for you, Miss Jiang? Hu Yuan replied. For once, Suman's constant smile crumbled, but a split like a second later, she caught it. She'd probably never seen someone like Hu Yian. Jiwan longed to watch them interact for longer, but her lunch break was limited. It's fine, Miss. It's fine, Miss Yu. I'm going to drink water anyway. Then I'll buy you coffee. Hu Yian stood up with her tray. As Suman followed her up, her gaze snagged on the cardigan around Hu Yian's waist. Isn't that Miss Kang's cardigan? I lent it to her. Minwan, are you getting coffee with us? Jiwan silently signaled for Minwan not to stick around and get lost. I feel a bit full. I'll head up first. Fortunately, he seemed to have some sense left. Minwan nodded and left. Now the only people left were Su Min and Hu Yian. Jiwan's head hurt when she thought of going to the cafe with them both, but she couldn't skip coffee after lunch either. We're a bit short on time. Let's just buy coffees and go back up. You're both okay with that, right? It's on me. Miss Kang, I said I would buy it, Hu Yian jumped up and down. It seemed like she really wanted to repay the favor. I'm still your superior. I can't have a new employee buy coffee for me, Jiwan said. Suman interjected. Thanks, Jiwan. I mean, Miss Kang. Then she linked her arms through Jiwan's. A memory Jiwan had forgotten suddenly popped up. During their school days, the two of them always linked arms like this. When teachers passed, they stroked Suman's head, saying she looked like a baby bird attached to a bamboo tree. None of them ever stroked Jiwan's head. Both of you go up first. I'll get the coffee myself. Jiwan extricated her arm from Suman's. Now, she'd probably remember that every time someone linked arms with her. Why, Jiwan? What? Then I'll go, Hu Yian said. Suman spoke at, Hu Yian and Suman spoke at the same time. I need some time alone to think anyway, she said. A cappuccino for you, right, Miss Jiang? What about you, Miss Yu? An iced Americano. Nurse so no syrup. Hu Yuan's reaction was a bit unexpected. Ji Wan had expected Hu Yuan to insist on buying. Nonetheless, she was grateful that Hu Yuan gave her time to herself. I'll head up soon. Go on first. Ji Wan sent the two away and walked outside. Now that she was alone, she could breathe again. She already had a lot to think about. Min Wan kept on getting on, kept on getting on her nerves, and Su Min kept picking fights with Hu Yian. It was incredible she hadn't gotten indig indigestion. Miss Yu, when did you become friends with Miss Kang? After Ji Wan left to get coffees alone, Su Min smiled brightly at Hu Yian. Why? Hu Yian asked. I'm just curious. I've never seen the two of you talk before. I was surprised when you came into the cafeteria together. Hu Yian smiled. She's my lifesaver. I'm going to repay her any way I can. Your lifesaver? Suman tilted her head. I was stuck in the bathroom earlier because I didn't have any pads. You know how tricky that can be, right? And I didn't even have my phone. Suman's expression stiffened. When she went to the bathroom to get paper towels earlier, a woman had called to her for help. Excuse me, person outside? They'd called. Pardon? Are you talking to me? Suman had asked. Yes, I'm sorry. Do you have any pads? I'll repay the favor as soon as I get out of here, the woman had said. Suman was already irritated, so the sudden request had only annoyed her further. She ignored the plea and slammed the door on her way out, so no one else could hear the woman's shouts. And that's the end of chapter eight. Let's see. Let's see what the comments say. I didn't do this for chapters seven and six, but it's fine. Let's see. The top comment is refusing to give a pad to a person in need is just cruel. And is 
uh, I can't imagine not helping a woman on her moon time. Moon time. I've never heard that. I've heard of Shark Week. I've heard of your app, Patty or somebody, some aunt with a P being in town, but moon time, that's different. I feel like that whole repaying the favor thing will be a big plot later on. Hugh Hyun's answer to Suman was fantastic. Kindness is repaid in full. Malice is repaid until the victim is broken. That's very true. All right, so we're going on to chapter nine. A thin line between kindness and nosiness. She won't recognize my voice, will she? Suman felt a bit anxious. <gasps> I didn't know what to do, but Miss Kang ran to the office to get what I needed. She even let me close. She's totally my lifesaver, isn't she? Yu Yan clasped her hands together. Our Jiwan, I meant Miss Kang is like that, Suman nodded. Isn't she so nosy? She's all she always gets involved in strangers' affairs. Worrying about your co-workers, grandfather does for a living is being nosy. Hu Yan replied with a smile. Suman swallowed the profanity that surged the back of her throat. Hu Yan Yu. The woman had gotten on Suman's nerves since her first day. The higher-ups all paid attention to Hu Yan with her pretty face and spirited attitude. Suman couldn't help but feel anxious that Hu Yan would take Ji Wan now. Ji Wan was supposed to belong to her. Suman bent toward Hu Yan. I'm telling you this for your own sake. Don't trust your lifesaver too much. I've known her for a long time, so I'm fine, but... Thank you for your advice, advice Miss Ji, Miss Young. Human stopped in front of the elevators. But since you're such a nosy person, you could have at least told me you didn't have any pads. <laughs> Ding! The elevator opened and people poured out. Hugh Yeon got on, but Suman just stood there. You're not coming, Miss Young? Hugh Yeon asked, but she was already pressing the closed door button. It shut before Suman could answer. <laughs> Got her. Oh, Miss Young, manager Ji Young Eun Kim approached, sipping coffee from the cafeteria's vending machine. Why are you alone? Where's Miss Kang? She went to buy coffee, Mr. Kim. You're wearing a handsome tie today. Suman raised the corners of her mouth, so she had, n so she had never gritted her teeth, as if she had never gritted her teeth. It went without saying that his tie was far from handsome. S Since you say so, I should wear this all the time. Ji Yong Yuk. Ji Yong Yuk. Ji Yong Yuk looked so worn out as if he had already had three kids, but he was actually unmarried. His ex he he'd expressed interest in Suman constantly ever since she entered the company. Oh my, Mr. Kim! Suman giggled and nudged his arm. Ji Yong Yuk smiled widely. I actually want to come to work now that you're here. Before there were only two women in the office. One was a middle-aged married woman and the other was as thin as a chopstick. I was surprised to hear you're actually Miss Kang's friend. Why? We're so close. Suman widened her eyes and raised her index finger to her lips. You're pretty. And how do I put this? You're more feminine. What? Suman waved a hand. Miss Kang is the pretty one. Her arms and legs are long and her skin is flawless. Miss Kang is probably the prettiest woman in our company. Ji Yong Uk snickered irritatingly. Absolutely not, Miss Jong. If Miss Kang is pretty, then everyone else in our company is Miss Korea. Hm. Men don't know what they're talking about. Suman pouted and rolled her eyes. Jiang uh, grinned as if Suman were too adorable. All men are the same. If there's anything that makes you uncomfortable at work, pretty Suman. What's he doing calling me pretty Suman? Suman imagined spitting on the floor. Her eyes flashed. Anything uncomfortable? Well, n never mind. It's nothing. <laughs> Why did you stop mid-sentence? You can tell me anything. I'll help you. Jiang uh, fell. Ji Young Uk fell hook, line, and sinker. It's just me whining. It's not something to tell you. Here. 
Suman rose onto her tiptoes and leaned forward to place her lo her lips close to Ji Yong Uk's ear. Will you buy me a drink after work today? <sighs> the devil works hard, but Suman manipulating people works harder. One warm cappuccino, two two iced americanos, oh, and one mixed grain smoothie. At the cafeteria, Jiwon added a mixed grain smoothie at the last minute, suddenly reminded of Ji Hyuk. He was in the office during lunch, and she didn't see him at the cafeteria. He had probably skipped lunch. She hoped he wasn't. She wasn't being nosy. As she held out her card, she shook off the thought. He bought her a sandwich and a coffee this morning. It made sense to get him a smoothie. Also, it was rare to find a Korean person who didn't like a mixed grain as it was a fine. It was to as it was to find a Korean person who didn't like chicken. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was rare to find a Korean person who didn't like mixed grain as it was to find a Korean person who didn't like chicken. When she carried the drinks up to the office, Suman and Hugh Yeon weren't at their desks. Minwon sat alone, staring at stock market graphs. Did they go brush their teeth or something? Jiwon didn't think too much of it. She set the cups at their respective positions. When she looked through the window, two long legs stuck out from Ji Hyuk's spot. Mr. Yu, have some... She broke off. Ji Hyuk was asleep again, like this morning. He leaned back in his chair, arms folded over his chest. Was he tired? He didn't seem that way during work. Jiwon tried to recall whether Ji Hyuk had slept like this ten years ago. She didn't remember anything. Oh, this? Jiwon whispered. She set the smoothie on Ji Hyuk's desk. Then, just as she was about to tiptoe back to her seat, someone grabbed her arm. Jiwon Kang... Her arm felt like it was going to break. Jiwon barely swaddled, swallowed a whimper, and looked at Min Hwan. Follow me out. Let go of my arm first. Jiwon tried to shake him off, but she couldn't beat a man's strength. Her anxiety rose. It was almost time for people to start returning. They were an official office couple, but nothing good would come of letting others see this. She didn't know where Ji Hyuk... She didn't know when Ji Hyuk might wake up either. Mr. Park, what are you doing? Apparently, Ji Hyuk had just woken up. He rose in silence and gripped Min Wan's shoulder, the same arm which Min Wan currently held Ji Wan's. No matter how much she struggled, she wasn't able to shake Min Wan off, but her arm suddenly felt lighter. Min Wan glowered at Ji Hyuk. It's nothing. I have something to say to her. Miss Kang doesn't look like she has anything to say. On the other hand, Ji Hyuk stared at Min Hwan, emotionless and unreadable. It's lunchtime. This is a personal matter between me and Ji Wan. Since when do you interfere in the personal lives of your employees, Mr. Yu? Min Wan straightened and glared back at Ji Hyuk. Ji Hyuk didn't budge. It may be lunchtime, but lunch is still included in working hours. You are here to work. Take care of your personal matters after. Lost for a reply, Min Wan shut his mouth. Only then did Ji Hyuk slowly let go of Min Wan's shoulders. I take it you understand what I'm saying. And Miss Kang? Ji Wan stiffened. Yes? Thank you for the drink. Just as Ji Hyuk turned around, Min Wan's face crumpled like foil. Suddenly, the horror ingrained into Ji Wan over ten years flooded through her. Do you know how shitty my life has become because of you? I married you because you were pitiful. So fucking pitiful. Then let's get divorced. Just divorce me, she begged. Divorce? You want a fucking divorce? Do you have another man? Or did you lose your goddamn mind? How dare you order me to divorce you? A litany of abusive language and curses ran through her mind now. He used to frown this exact same way whenever he shouted at her. Broken plates and hateful glares. Jiwon's mind went blank and her entire body, body started trembling. Even the turning back of time couldn't erase her trauma. Minwon turned toward her. Jiwon, why are you... Don't touch me! Jiwon leapt away from Minwon's outstretched arm. At the sound, Ji Hyuk spun around to spit. Ugh. At the sound, Ji Hyuk spun around to split Jiwon and Minwon again. Are you all right, Miss Kang? She collected her bearings at the large, tree-like man blocking Minwon from her sight. Jiwon realized she wasn't even breathing. I... I'm fine. 
I'm going to go to the bathroom. Let's go. I'll take you. Min Wan stepped around Ji Hyuk. Ji Wan stiffened again. But just then, a bright voice called her name. Miss Kang! Miss Yang, she turned. Juran smiled warmly and indicated the door. I'm going to brush my teeth. Do you want to go together? Y yes. I was just about to go too. Ji Wan fumbled through her door with still trembling hands. Let's go, Mr. Park. I'm going to borrow Ji Wan for a moment. Oh, sorry. Let's go, uh, Mr. Park. I'm going to borrow Ji Wan for a moment. Ji Wan grabbed Ji Wan's hand and pulled. Thankfully, Ji Wan escaped Min Wan's clutches and fled to the bathroom. You're not going to brush your teeth, Ji Wan asked after putting toothpaste on her toothbrush. Now that she looked, Juron's hands were empty. She didn't seem to plan on leaving to fetch anything either. I already did, Juron said. Then what? Ji Wan blinked at Juron through the mirror. Miss Kang, your face is pale. Your hands are cold too. At that, Ji Wan raised her hands to touch her face. Her hands felt as cold as ice. Her face looked white as in the reflection. I thought something was off. Did anything happen with Mr. Park? I... Was Juron always such a generous person? Jiwan didn't remember. She could only recall that they never clashed at work. That and Juron had swallowed tears when she'd resigned. I'm fine. I must have gotten dizzy. That happens. Take your time. There are still about ten minutes left in the lunch hour. Juron stayed by Jiwan's side, not asking anything. Juwan was grateful for it, regardless of whether Juron was being intentional, con uh, intentionally considerate or not. After brushing her teeth and gargling, she felt better. How's your daughter? How old is she now? Juwan asked. Juron opened her phone and showed her pictures of her baby. She just turned 100 days old. Doesn't she look exactly like me? She really does. Your noses are the splitting image of each other. Juron laughed and closed her phone. My mom said she acts like I did too when I was a baby. My mom always told me one day she'd get her payback when I had to raise a daughter like me. What do you know? I do have a daughter just like me, she sighed. My heart breaks having to put the little darling in daycare, but what can I do? I have to earn enough money to feed and clothe my daughter. Jiwon hesitated, unsure of how to respond within the next two months. Juron would quit her job. In the past, Jiwon didn't think anything of it. She'd never cared about anyone but Suman and Minhwan. Sorry, but this is a boring topic for an unmarried young lady like you, isn't it? Juron said. Jiwon looked at her with newfound appreciation. Juron wasn't just someone who returned to work after maternity like after Joran wasn't just someone who returned to work after her maternity leave and quit again. She acted like an older sister, and she was raising a daughter who looked exactly like her. Not at all. I was just thinking that her 100th day celebration has already passed, and I didn't get her anything. It's the thought that counts. Are you feeling a bit better? Joran smiled. Thankfully, yes. Let's go in Miss N now, Miss Yang. Jiwan walked back into the office with Joran. Fortunately, Minwan wasn't there. Maybe he'd gone for a smoke. If her distant memory served her correctly, the next highest ranking person in the office, after Ji Hyuk and Jiang Hyuk, was always handed. Oh. In her distant memory, if her distant memory served her correctly, the highest ranking person in the office after Ji Hyuk was Jong Uk, the annoying guy that was flirting with Suman. He always handed all his work to Joran. He claimed it was because he had been too overworked while Joran was on maternity, maternity leave. What happened after that? Jiwon was absentmindedly clicking her mouse when Hugh Yeon tapped, on her, tapped her on the shoulder. Thank you for the coffee, Miss Lifesaver. I'll drink it well. Oh, of course. You're welcome. Now she remembered. Hugh Yeon was the fuse. Mmm. Jiwon okayed Hugh Yeon. He found fault with whatever she did and always assigned her many menial tasks. At the same time, he continued passing off his work to Juron. At first, he was discreet about it. But when Ji Hyuk left for 10 days on a business trip, he became blatant. 
As Joran worked overtime, Hugh Yeon protested to uh, John Uk. John Uk shouted curses in a furious outburst, asking how the youngest employee dared to talk back to a superior. But Ji Hyuk had returned from his business trip at exactly that moment. Ji Hyuk had severely reprimanded Jong Uk. No one had seen Ji Hyuk so angry before. The incident sparked rumors that Ji Hyuk and Hu Yeon were dating. People whispered about it and asked Hu Yeon every time they saw her. Hu Yeon requested to change divisions soon after and was removed from theirs. After that, Yeon Uk began to harass Juran even more openly. An old woman like you should just stay at home and watch your kid. Why would you insist on coming to work and screwing everything up? We're already short staffed. How are you going to catch up? Finish everything by today. Your kid is sick? Everyone here has issues. Enough with the excuses. Do your work. Jiwon had wanted to help her, but the wall she'd built around herself didn't allow her to step in. In the end, Juran couldn't endure anymore. She quit. Jiwon remembered her teary farewell. She stopped clicking her mouse and stared at her neat wallpaper. Can I help you? Can I change other people's fate too? Deep in contemplation, Jiwon didn't hear Juron approach until Juron set a mug on Jiwon's desk. It's a peppermint tea. It'll warm you and calm you down. Drink this instead of coffee. Her hands warmed when she, she wrapped them around the mug. Jiwon smiled at Juron. Thank you, Miss Yang. It's just a tea bag. If you need any more, come to my desk, Juron winked. Clearly, she was telling Jiwon to escape her desk if she fought with Minwon again. I will. Soon, the other employees returned to their afternoon tasks. Jiwon looked around the office and stilled her resolve. <sighs> so what? I already came back from the dead. Ooh. So, she keeps seeing Ji Hyuk sleeping. Is he sleeping because he's already finished his work? Because he's come back from the past now, too? And so he's just like, I'm just going to be cat napping around work now because fuck this job. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> um, and Suman, I'm pretty sure. She said something to that uh, bitch ass boss. Gyung. What is this? Gyung. Uk. Uk. <laughs> um, I feel like Jiwon is finally starting to like. She's hammered out her theory as to how things will play out. And I think she's ready to make her move, even more moves, other than just buying the stock like she did in the previous chapters. I think she's about to start putting into motion plans that it could affect her life in general with Minwan and Suman. I'm happy that she's realizing that she did have people that cared around her and she's not caught up in only paying attention to Minwan and Suman. And she's analyzing Joran and Hugh Gion who seem like real friends and she's even observing that Ji Hyuk is actually a nice person too he's not just the quiet scowling boss that just watched everybody um let me read some of the top comments and then we're going to go on to chapter 10. Let's see. Juran honestly seems like a great person to be around. She helped Jiwon get away from Minwon even when she didn't have to. I hope Jiwon can help out Juran in return. Joran is such a sweetheart. I can't wait to get the full version of the issues she had in the company and at home. I love that she looked out for others too. She's looking out for others too. This is one of my favorite moments when Jiwon realizes the second chance is not just a gift for her to use, but she can share with others. Yes, yes. 
Yes. Yes. I hope she can help Jaron stay at the company and get rid of... Well, I if you read the web novel and you... If you read the webtoon and watch the drama, you already know how it plays out. But I want to see if it's exactly the same because some things are kind of different. The part with the cafeteria when they're going back, it was actually Su Min and Min Hwan who were in the elevator together, not her and the crappy boss, uh, Jeon Yuk. I'm gonna say I'm gonna get his name right eventually. But it was those two and not Min Hwan. And I think that's when it happened. Because in the drama, those two went out to eat, I think. And that's when Suman mentioned to the boss that those two were bullying her or some bullshit she came up with. But anyways, onward to chapter 10, which is called Guardian Angels. All right, so chapter 10, Guardian Angels. Miss Jong, over here. A car stopped in front of Suman, who stood at a slight distance away from the company building. What should we eat? Is there anything you want? Zhang Uk asked as Suman climbed into the passenger seat. I'm good with anything, she smiled. He squinted at her. And you're this small? Hmm. I can't grow as tall as Jiwan, no matter how much I eat. Zhang Uk slammed the brakes. Suman's neck almost snapped as the car jerked to a halt. Too bad it didn't. She hadn't put on her seatbelt yet. You mean Miss Kang? You mention Miss Kang all the time. What's so good about a pole woman who isn't cute in the slightest? Suman sighed. I've always wanted to be that tall. Men like women who are small and pretty like you. I wouldn't take an unattractively tall woman even if I got paid to. With that, Ji Young Uk lit a cigarette and smoked. The combination of cheap air freshener, old man body odor, and cigarette stench made Suman want to die. I mean, she kind of deserves it. <laughs> Kidding, she deserves it. You like sushi, right, Miss Young? Totally. They parked and Suman followed Young Uk into a sushi restaurant. She felt disgusted at the sight of the half bald man with an overly gelled comb over as he ordered soju. This sucks. Jiwon is probably on a date with her handsome boyfriend who wears designer shirts. Suman felt even more disgusted when she glimpsed Young Uk's dirty sleeve. It was a relief her face turned red after a single glass of soju. I actually can't drink very well, Suman warned him in advance as she poured Young Uk some soju. You're not the type who says that and then drinks five bottles, are you? Young Uk also filled Suman's glass, cracking a joke that even a dog wouldn't laugh at. Suman quickly emptied her glass and took a small bite of the sushi. Phew, I sure would like to drink five bottles today. Why? You said something similar at work too. Is something the matter? Young Uk asked with concern. Suman sighed. No, I'm just complaining. I'm telling you because I think of you as an older brother. Of course, of course. Don't call me Mr. Kim. You can call me Opa when we're not working, he replied. Can I, Opa? Suman perked up. The balding, middle-aged man gave a toothy grin. Suman tried to ignore the piece of lettuce hanging between his front teeth. I'm fine with work. I can always just work harder, but human relationships are so hard. Suman sighed again and sipped the soju Yong Uk gave her. Human relationships? Is someone bothering my pretty Suman? She waved a hand. You know how women are, always busy with internal battles and being wary of each other. That's the problem with women, Young Uk shook his head. Ugh, they're always trying to bring down women who are prettier or better than them. Suman wrapped her hands around her red cheeks. She let her eyelids droop as if she were drunk. There were only four women in marketing division one. Herself, Jiwan, Hu Yian, and Joran. 
If they took sides, Hu Yian and Joran would be on one team. But strangely, Joran and Jiwan have been acting close these days. Suman inwardly scoffed, recalling how Jiwan drank tea at Joran's desk this morning. Jiwan's going to someone else's desk for something non-work related. It couldn't and it shouldn't happen. Actually, Opa, there's this girl who came into the company with me. You he on you? She opened her mouth in an exaggerated O. Oh. How did you know? You're so amazing. Young Uk shrugged. I know it all. What is? Miss you bullying my pretty Suman? Not bullying. She's just... Suman hesitated, pretending to be unsure. Both Miss Yu and Miss Yang, they dislike me. Suman wants to be friends with everyone, though. Even Miss Yang? I didn't peg that old lady as obnoxious, but I guess she is. Did she say something to you? If there were an award for being obnoxious, Ji Yong Uk would unanimous unanimously win first place. Of course, he didn't know this. They never know this. It's nothing. I'm sure I'm doing something wrong. <laughs> Ugh. Suman smiled and poured more soju into Jeon Uk's glass. Huh. You're already drunk. Are you okay? Jeon Uk brushed Suman's hand, pretending to take the glass away from her. Suman quickly removed her hand and rested her chin on it. Don't be too upset if I quit, okay? What are you talking about? You're going to quit? Jeon Uk straightened. She exhaled. I'm so tired. Not everyone is a good person like you. And it's not like I have the authority to be like, stop, I'm going to punish you. You want to punish them? Young Uk watched her for a moment. Should I punish them for you? Ha, huh. you don't have the power to. Suman wiped away non-existent tears and beamed again. My pretty Suman doesn't know. Young Uk shook his head. I'm invisible because of Jion Ji Hyuk. But I'm actually the second in command at our office. I'll make it so no one can bully you anymore. Just don't say you're going to quit. Deal? Aw, I'm so grateful to hear you say that, Opa. Young Uk gave another toothy smile at the last word. Now all I have to do is wait for him to do my dirty work. Suman smiled, her face still red. The half bald man reeking of cigarette smoke might still be disgusting but she could bear him if he tormented Hugh Yeon starting tomorrow. Oh boy, here we go. Jiwon didn't speak to Min Hwan all day. She kept her phone off, and whenever it seemed like Min Hwan was going to talk to her, she either started on meaningless work or escaped to Juran's desk. Let's finish up what we're doing and clock out for the day, Ji Hyuk said at 5.50 p.m. Suman, who had already fixed her makeup, whispered to Jiwon, I have an appointment today, so I'm leaving. Call me? I don't want to know, she replied. You're so funny, Suman nudged her shoulder and returned to her seat. But Jiwon was being serious. Suman wasn't the immediate problem. Minwon would wait for her in front of the building later. She didn't know what had pushed his buttons, but that obsessive piece of trash wouldn't just overlook today's incident. I'll see you tomorrow, an employee nearby said. Good work, everyone, Ji Hyuk called. At six o'clock on the dot, employees exchanged greetings and began to leave. Jiwon went to the bathroom. She planned to stay there until Minwon got tired and went home. Don't be scared. There's nothing to be scared of, she told herself in the mirror. But calming down wasn't easy. Ten years of hell weighed heavily on her mind, not to mention the memory of her own murder. All those terrible feelings were deeply imprinted. To swap her fate with Suman's, Jiwon needed to overcome this fear. I need to change myself first, Jiwon slowly breathed in and out in the mirror. A woman with a long ponytail and glasses mimicked her motions. How long had it been? 20 minutes? Jiwon carefully opened the door and walked outside. A few office lights leaked through cracks in the door, but the hallway stood empty. Minwon probably went home by now. Jiwon tiptoed down the quiet hallway toward the elevator. Suddenly she froze. A man in a suit stood before the empty elevator. Minwon? Jiwon's heart thumped, thinking of his crumpled face earlier. She froze. 
unable to retreat or walk forward. Then the man turned towards her. You're leaving now, Miss Kang? It was Ji Hyuk, not Men Huan. Her racing heart slowed again. It's already seven. I'm sure I told everyone to refrain from working overtime, he said. I was behind on work. <laughs> Ji Hyuk replied after a pause. What about you, Mr. Yu? I had something to take care of with administration. I'm leaving now. I see. Jiwon stood a few paces from Ji Hyuk. The elevator dinged on the 10th floor. Right above them, at least this awkwardness wouldn't last much longer. Hmm. She blinked. The elevator had just sailed past the ninth floor. Oh, you didn't press the button. I didn't know the great Mr. Yu could make such a mistake. Jiwon pressed the button herself. Now they hovered uncomfortably as they waited for the next elevator. Are you heading home right away? Ji Hyuk asked. No. Is there something you need me to do? Jiwon replied internally, begging him to say yes. She wanted to work overtime, any excuse to stay here. Besides, when Ji Hyuk asked a question like that, it was always work related. Do you have an appointment? Ji Hyuk said. He must have an urgent task he needed help with. No, I plan to get going to the mall alone, but I'm not going to. The mall? Ji Hyuk's eyebrows twitched. Ji Wan grew certain he needed something done by tomorrow. It's not important. I wanted to do some retail therapy. If it's urgent, I can take care of work first. What do you need me to do? The elevator arrived. Ji Hyuk strolled onto it instead of answering. Ji Wan had no choice but to follow him. Nothing went slower than an uncomfortable ride in the elevator with another person. Jiwon couldn't help herself. When they reached the fourth floor, she asked again, Mr. Yu, what do you need me to do? Ji Hyuk peered at Jiwon through his glasses. Jiwon suddenly remembered how she'd stared at him while he was asleep and felt even more embarrassed. If you don't remember right now, you can email or text me when... I'll be passing by the mall, Ji Hyuk said, cutting her off. I'll take you there. No, it's fine. Being in the same car as Ji Hyuk, it was uncomfortable just thinking about it. She would probably suffocate from the awkwardness. Ji Wan waved her hands as the elevator reached the first floor. I'll be off now. Goodbye. Miss Kang, Ji Hyuk caught the strap of Ji Wan's bag. The contents spilled out all over the ground. Oh, I'm sorry, Ji Hyuk bent over to pick them up. In the meantime, the elevator descended to the underground parking lot. I'll give you a ride. You'll have to leave now to arrive at the mall before it closes. He held the door op open button and not nodded outside. He wasn't wrong. After some hesitation, Ji Wan followed him out, saying she'd only burden him this once. The inside of his black sedan was clean, without a speck of dust. It was the complete opposite of Min Wan's car, which was always filled with trash and drinks from who knew who knew when. Are you going to the Apajong Banpope or Dachidong? Ji Hyuk asked. Apologies for my pronunciation. I know it was terrible. Anywhere is fine. Didn't you say you were passing by the mall? Passing by a mall? Jiwon tilted her head. I'm passing by that area. Bampu, it is then. He seemed in a hurry to change the subject. Jiwon shook the thought away. Ji Hyuk changed, changing subjects? Unheard of. You'd be more likely to see a pony at the busiest intersection in Korea. The sedan pulled out of the parking lot. Jiwon stared out the window. Then she flinched and covered her face. Minwon's car was still parked in front of the building. No one can see inside. The windows are heavily tinted, Ji Hyuk said, without emotion as he turned the wheel. A million questions raced through Ji Wan's mind. Is he giving me a ride because he knew Min Wan was waiting for me? How does he know I'm avoiding Min Wan? Ji Hyuk spoke again, as if he'd realized why she looked confused. You suddenly cover your, you covered your face. Oh, Ji Wan's face flushed. You can just drop me off at the subway station. Why are you in such a hurry to get out? Now Ji Hyuk sounded slightly annoyed. 
It's almost time for the mall to close. I'm just going to head home. I'll go to the mall on Saturday. Where do you live? Ji Hyuk parked the car on the side of the road and turned to Ji Won. There could be no misunderstanding this time. He intended to drive her home. It's near Kongguk University, but you really don't have to. That works fine. I have dinner plans near there. Ji Hyuk didn't listen to the rest of the, her sentence. He stepped on the gas again. Ji Won was so uncomfortable that the soft leather seats felt like they were made of thorns. She desperately wished she had uh, stuck a. She desperately wished she were stuck amidst a sea of backpacks on the subway from hell right now. Damn. <laughs> Giving up, she looked out the window. She moved her hand to the door handle when something caught her finger. She slid it out. It was a lipstick tube. Jiwon didn't know much about lipstick, but she recognized the lipstick's famous brand. So he has a girlfriend. Lipstick in a man's car must belong to his girlfriend. Jiwon returned it to its spot. Over there, the building opposite the convenience store, she finally spotted her apartment. Ji Hyuk parked in front of the building. Jiwon pointed at. Then he climbed out to open the passenger side door for her. I'll see you tomorrow. She flushed. Thank you for the ride. See you tomorrow. Jiwon bowed and quickly disappeared inside. Not long after, a light on the third floor switched on. Ji Hyuk got back in his car and parked a bit further away. After setting the emergency brake, he leaned his seat back, his gaze still fixed on Jiwon's apartment. A little while later, his phone vibrated. He held it to his ear. Boss, you're not getting off work, a voice shouted. I can't go today. Take care of things yourselves, he said. The voice huffed. Is something going on? You've been negligent with things on this side lately. I'm hanging up. Ji Hyuk tossed his phone aside and took off his glasses. The light from a signpost shone through the windows and created a shadow next to his high nose. Until the sun rose, his car didn't move a single inch. Oh shit, he worried about his girly pop. Ew! Okay. So, wait. Oh, let me read the comments. Let me read the comments. You know what? Suman is worse than Trashta. So, if you've been reading The Remarried Empress, you know who Trashta, Trashta is. Trashta is. <sighs> I don't think Suman's worse than... Well, yeah... Because Trashta was actually enslaved and we can understand, we can sympathize with her wanting to get out of that situation where Suman, her life is fine. She's just a lazy piece of shit who's intent on ruining everybody's lives around her and using people. So yeah, I could see that. Well, it's so different from the webtoon. It's so exciting. Yes, Aubrey. Yes. Let's see. I love all these new details that were edited out from the webtoon, which is to be expected. I can't wait to learn in depth about each character and situation. That's what I mentioned, I think, uh, at the beginning of the, uh, this video. But yeah, it's so cool getting all these new like nuances that you didn't you can't get from the two other um av of what's I can't think of the word that I'm thinking of, but the other two avenues of entertainment like the webtoon or the drama because they're like on a time crunch. Whereas with books, they have more time to be more detailed with things. Like the part where Minwan is waiting for Suman and Ji Hyuk like pulls on her purse. So she has to like waste more time. And him changing his mind to say he could just give her a ride when she says she doesn't want to go to the mall. And him parking the car and waiting. So in case Minwan shows up, I'm sure he would have pulled, he would have hopped about the car and beat his ass. Um, but yeah. And we get, 
I think we got inklings in the webtoon and the drama that Suman was behind people um, being bullied by the disgusting manager. I think in the, I think they showed a little bit of it in the other two avenues. Um, but this one, you actually got her inner monologue that, yeah, she knows what she's doing. Um, she likes to play naive and we, you kind of picked up on the fact that she's a manipulative person, but hearing it from her is, gives you even more nuance and understanding of, I hate this bitch because there's no need for her to do any of the things that she's doing, like her motivation non-existent she's just like oh, I'm jealous of this bitch so I'm about to sick this um excuse of a man on these two women because how dare they become friends with Jiwon but yeah Thank you so much for listening to the video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a comment, uh, like, and subscribe. And I will be back in another month <laughs> with some more Marry My Husband. I hope you have a great October. I love your faces. And... I'll see you next month. Bye.